guys and welcome back to Victoria's Creations. Today I want to talk about sublimating on wood. So I went to Dollar Tree and I bought some of their wood plaques to make some little wooden signs with. Basically we're going to turn this piece of wood into this beautiful piece of art. If you're ready to take your sublimation to the very next level, stick around. In order to complete this project, you're going to need the Teflon paper. You're going to need four sheets of it. I know normally when you're sublimating, you only need two, but for this project, you're going to need four. Laminate pouches and get the kind that open up. These are the thermals, not the self-stick kind, the thermal kind. You've got a shiny side. And then the inside is the uh, frosted side. Your design, your wooden plaque, scissors, your heat pad, and I'm using my little uh, nine by nine heat press, Cricut heat press. And put that back. I'll have to plug that in. Turn it in. Turn it on. And I'm also going to use my uh, Cricut X-Acto knife and heat transfer tape. And that's it. That's all you need. So let's get started. Yes. Okay. To get started, I went ahead and preset my Cricut Easy Press. I have it set for 400 degrees for 60 seconds. So while this is warming up, I'm going to get everything ready. So you just lay your... Teflon or your butcher paper down. I use Teflon paper. Take off the rope. And you really only need to untie one side because it'll come off on the other side. Set that on your Teflon or butcher paper. I use butcher paper again. These out of the way. I will try not to bump the camera, guys, but no promises. Take your <clears throat> laminate pouch and you're going to open it up. And at the seam, ooh, fumble fingers today. At the seam, you're going to just rip it apart. And it comes apart really easily. You don't have to do anything but. Just tear it like that. And then lay one sheet over top of your wood. Now, you want to make sure you have, and I know you can't see it in the video, but you have one side that is smooth when you fill it, and you have one side that is not smooth. The one side that is not smooth, that is your, um, let's see, inside, that is the frosted side, and then the other side is your clear side. Clear, soft side up that faces up and set that on there. Keep your um, design to the side. Place your other sheet over top and you'll want to make sure that it's all covered. And if you think that some of it won't be, trim some of it. trim you don't want to trim it too close because when you put the heat on this it is going to shrink some there so you want to make sure you have plenty of room on all four sides put your sheet over top And we're going to heat press. I like to make sure that I have it completely over the wood. 
hit start and apply your pressure. And I'm going to do this for 60 seconds. Take that off. This is going to be a bit warmish, but when you take it off, this is what you should see. And this is also why you needed the four sheets because, oh, that comes off pretty good. Uh-oh. See how it's still coming up? When it comes up like that, that means you need to do it for a little bit longer because it did not do all the way. It's not heat up my um, cord. A little bit of pressure. I probably should have used the bigger easy press. Oh, come right on up with it. All right. Give that a second to cool because you are going to have to handle that. You don't want it too hot. You don't have to turn off your easy press because you are going to use that again here in just a few moments. If you do not have um, heat resistant gloves, wait for it to cool completely. If you do have heat resistant gloves, go ahead and put them on. It is now, it's cool enough, I can put my hand on it with my gloves, but that's about the extent of it. And then you want to cut away along the edges. And sometimes it's easier if you are at an angle. You're going to miss some of it. And that's okay because that's where you can sand it down to make it fit or to make it go better. Because you don't want any sharp edges. And don't cut yourself with the exacto knife like I almost did. Also, be careful that you're not cutting so deep that you're going through the paper. And this piece is now trash because you really can't do anything else with it. Now you can take your X-Acto knife, being very careful, and just kind of round these edges to get the little pieces off that are sticking out. And you may shave some of the wood, that's okay. The good thing about this laminate sheet is it does cut away fairly easily. I think it's most laminate sheets. Now, if you see that you still have pieces 
that are kind of sticking out and they're a little sharp and you want to get rid of them, but you don't want to keep cutting away because you're afraid you might cut away at the wood, you can get you a little um, file, a little nail file or a little piece of sanding paper and take care of that. Now, as you can see, but I hope I wasn't holding that all the way up there. <laughs> as you can see, it's completely on there. Now you will also want to make sure that you take care of these little holes because you are going to be putting your um, string through here. all the shavings I like to use my pointed Cricut tool I'm not real sure what this is called but it's got a nice point to the end of it so you can always puncture your holes like that and then just kind of wiggle it around and that gets it through too. And no sharp edges. Now, set those to the side. Take off your shading, so to speak. The top piece that you use, technically you can use that again as long as you didn't get any So the top piece of butcher paper or um, Teflon paper that you used, you can technically use that again as long as you didn't get any um, laminate on it. I just like to not take chances. So the next step is to take your laminate, your laminate side up, put your image on there. Now, while you can cut around here so that you can see exactly where your image is going to be at. I don't suggest that simply because there will be an outline of this paper on your sign. You won't be able to see it except for in the light. So it is a preference. But you can see the image through, if you have a light shining on it, you can see the image. So you can kind of have an idea of where it is. And then you want to tape it down. If you do not yet have one of these tape dispensers for your heat for your uh, heat transfer tape, I really suggest getting one. I will put the link for, uh, for it down in the description, but these things are awesome. So just tape it down where you want it because you don't want your image to move. And see how I can hold this. I'm not having to cut that tape. It's automatically cut for me. All right, move your tape out of the way. Make sure you put your butcher sheet back over top of it. And this one, I'm gonna cut my butcher sheet so that I can kind of get a better idea. Just the top one though, of where my which my uh, sign is. Something else I like to do is put it to the edge and then lower it down. And that way I know. You're not really supposed to wiggle it, but it's taped on there so the image shouldn't move. Apply a little bit of pressure, 400 for 60 seconds.
Oh, oh this is gonna be hot. I did not realize it picked it up with it. Ooh. Little warmish. It's stuck to it good. Lift this corner up so you can see. And it did it, so now I can take it off. Now, that is hot. So I don't want to just all oh, really nearly touch it. On this side. And I can use this. There we go. Not much in, uh, ink is left on the paper, which is great. Instead, it is all here. I keep wanting to lift it way up here. It is all here. How about that? Now all we have to do, I'm gonna sand the sides down a little bit and put a cord on it and hang it and it'll be ready to go. Well, sadly enough, I thought I had some beads that I was going to go ahead and show you guys how to string these up and complete the look, but I don't. So I have to do that at another time, do a little add on later on. But now I have two signs and I will be giving one of these to either one of my kids or to my mom to have a little sign for their happy spring that they can put on their door or hang them in their house. I hope that you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to laminate, or not laminate, but well, laminate too, but how to sublimate on wood. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you see the bell, go ahead and click that too so you get a notification every time that I upload a new video. As always, have a blessed day. And remember, keep crafting your best life.